and welcome back um, to our library workshops. Um, it's December already. It's crazy to think that it's already December um, and we've been cooped up with COVID and everything going on. So I hope that you're being safe. Um, and this is just an extra thing that you can do over the holidays when you're staying inside. So this month we are actually doing more of a festive uh, sort of project together. And it's basically kind of like a winter scene is what we're doing. It does not have to be Christmassy. I made this one kind of Christmassy, but you could just do um, a snowy scene if you do not want to do Christmassy. And you're probably thinking this is a little overwhelming. There's, there's a lot of parts here, but I promise as we do it step by step, you will see that it is not a big a deal as it looks. So let's get started. And I want to give you uh, the supply list here. The supply list for the month of December you are going to need. Now, of course, you don't have to do as large a seam um, as I do, but I'm using a larger piece of uh, black construction paper. Um, if you do not want a darker seam up top, you can just do this in white, that's fine too. But the contrast of the black and the white is what I'm gonna show you today. So whatever size you use, you will need the same size in white. You will need um, various kinds of tissue paper. For my example, I use different kinds of tissue paper. This is the perfect time of year that you're going to have this stuff out anyway. Keep all those scraps um, or those presents that you open. Don't throw away the tissue paper or the uh, scrap wrapping paper because you can actually use those little pieces. So various colors of tissue paper. Um, colors, if you can get some colors in there instead of just white. Uh, to showcase up against here would be best. If your mom or dad or if you scrapbook any of those little paper scraps, I've got some of those in here. And then uh, wrapping paper scraps. Um, if you want to do one step above that, if you've got, you know, if you want to make a collage, you can even do that. Collage meaning that you're cutting and pasting different pieces together. You're going to need a scissors for your cutting. You're, you're going to need some glue, rather a glue stick um, or liquid glue. I will suggest definitely using, if you have it, a glue stick um, as we do if you're doing tissue paper. Otherwise, that liquid glue kind of seeps through and it makes it a little bit difficult to glue things down. Optional things that you could use for the background, again, everyone's different, so just depending on how you want to do it. You could actually use a black sharpie if you want to draw. Um, you can draw on your trees, so if you want to do detailed work, you can use a sharpie. Um, a hole punch. The hole punch, now I use the hole punch to just uh, punch out white paper and then I have these little dots to use for snow in the background. You can use glitter if you choose to. I did not use it on mine and I probably won't use it in the demo because it gets everywhere, but it does look awfully pretty. So if you've got glitter in any color, you could do that. And if you want to um, have your project go a little bit quicker in the drying process, uh, you could also use a hair dryer. I, a few things I did not mention on the supply list that I will showcase here today um, are some puffy paint colors. Um, if you see my snowflakes in here, I actually used a silver and a gold puffy paint. But I think that would be really pretty even if you did it like in neons or different colors, like a blue or something. Um, and then, these are Crayola, but lots of different um, brands will make these uh, metallic markers. Some kind of have like a little, if you can hear that, where you have to shake it up. Um, so these are, but you can find these like in the, the kids' aisles with the arts and crafts. Um, but any kind of uh, metallic marker, one is just a marker and one's kind of like got the, the pump on it. So, but those kind of will give you um, a metallic against those darker colors as well. So I'll show you those a little bit later. So let's get started. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to use this. I'm not cutting it down. I'm using it directly as I have it. So, so if you have um, construction paper, you're just going to leave it the size that you have it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the white paper that you've got, basically make a wavy line. That's the easiest way to create hills, just a wavy line. So I'm, I'm just kind of making a wavy line across. And uh, depending on where I want it, I'm just going to make a little dash at the bottom. And then I can take a ruler across and then just cut that area out. Now, because of the uh, length of the video, I've kind of, I've got one ready for me. Um, it wasn't exact, but I just kind of cut a bottom piece off. 
And what I'll do next is, I'll, uh, because it's the exact same size, I'm just going to lay it on there and I'm going to glue it down. So that's step one. You may not want a uh, wavy, you may just want a straight line, horizon line across, and that's perfectly fine too, whatever you choose to do. Um, I feel like if you have the lines, if you um, are familiar with artwork and how to show space and artwork, the placement and the size of your trees on those hills will make it actually look like there's some depth, which is kind of neat because then it doesn't look like a flat plane. It looks like there's some uh, dimension there. And glue it down. Okay? You want to get a background. Pretty cool. The next thing I did basically was I took some um, uh, white paper. Now you can use the same white paper that you used from your scraps, like the extra that you cut off. And I just cut those into various size triangles. So basically if I had scrap, I did not even measure them out. I just kind of took some paper and made a triangle. Pretty simple, okay? If you feel more comfortable using a ruler, you can do that. Um, but I did them in various shapes and sizes, so I've got some larger ones, I've got some uh, shorter ones. These are going to be your trees. And then the next step that we're going to do is we're actually going to decorate those trees. I'm going to start here with some gold, but I would suggest taking the shape that you choose to go with and putting glue on one side of it and then gluing that down directly onto the tissue paper so that you don't have to worry about wrapping it. I, I did that um, on those and it made it a little bit more difficult, so trial and error tells me um, that there's an easier way, and I think just if you have it, to do that. Now, if you don't have that, that way you can just have a full uh, shape right on there without having to worry about tucking it in the back. Now, if you want, you can take scraps um, and do you know different shapes on there. And again, I'm just, I'm randomly just kind of just cutting little scraps. And I'm doing this because odds are you probably have those at home anyway. Um, or if you're going to use multiple pieces of um, paper, you're going to end up with scraps. So I'm all about using what you have first instead of just taking one little design off of one and then grabbing it off another. So this is very minimalist. It's, there's not much to this, but I kind of, I actually really like that personally. So um, is this Christmassy? I don't know, but there's gold and there's color and I like that. And I think it's going to look nice up against my background. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just kind of place it right here and see how I like it. I'm going to put this one towards the front because again, if we talk about placement, Things closer to you look larger and have more detail. So I'm going to put this toward, like, towards the front of my background. And then this time, instead of actually going over one of these, I'm just going to cut a triangle shape from one of my uh, extra scrap book papers. Another idea that would be really cool, um, maybe you're not one that actually has a lot of paper scraps, but maybe you have somebody in your family who quilts or um, you might have fabric scraps. And that would be, that would be really cool too, to have, you could do this with fabric too. I think I'm gonna go with green this time. And I'm gonna do a little tree all the way in the back because the further it gets, gets to the back, the smaller it, is, it becomes, right? So here I've got my trees. You can do as many as you want in as many different kinds of uh, materials as you choose. If you're using lots of different materials and you're mixing them together, we call that mixed media because media is actually what you use to create your artwork. And so in this instance, I'm using paper. And I'm also going to be using some other things. So uh, we're going to call this a mixed media piece, which is kind of cool. I like that. Okay, so now I'm going to showcase uh, one of my markers. You can see it up close. It actually kind of has like a, a glitter to it, like a glitter it's almost got like a, a glitter uh, sheen to it, which is cool. So if you want, when I was talking about Sharpies, I don't know how well you can tell in my design, but I've actually added some designs with my markers in here. So I've added collage pieces, but I've also 
drew in them. So I'm, I'm going to basically kind of do that again. So because that last one was just green, I decided to add my own little flair to it. If you can see where I've made lines and little dots in silver, just to kind of give um, a little something to that one. So now what I'm going to go in and do is I'm going to actually use my puffy paint and um, I'm going to start with silver. And this is where I'm going to create my uh, gold and silver uh, snowflakes. For this, a snowflake, um, if you don't know how to make a snowflake, I don't really know that I know how to make a snowflake, but I'll show you how I make a snowflake. It's just kind of like a crisscross like an X and then an X and an X. And then I put like a V at the end of each one. And you can make these more complicated if you want, but this is just kind of like a basic one. And then I usually put like dots around it for snow. If you want it to make it look like there's actually movement in the piece, so I try to make it look like it's a little bit flustered and windy, you know, out there. You can just actually just, just make a long curved movement like that. If you double it up some dots by it. It kind of looks like there's movement in the air. I'm going to do the same thing with gold now. I hope you all have a, a wonderful Christmas. I, I know this is a different kind of Christmas this year, but I think it helps us uh, really focus on what's important, um, which is our family and our health and our well-being. And um, it gives us time to really maybe take time to do things that we normally are so busy that we don't have time to do. So something like this would be actually fun to sit down with your mom and dad or your grandparents or your aunt and uncle, cousins, and maybe do this. You could all watch, if you can't meet up together, you could watch the video together online and kind of compare what you've done in your project with maybe what your friends have done. So. So I'm just kind of add, adding here and there. You can add anything you want. If you wanted, you could add like a snowman or a little uh, ice skating ring or something like that. Um, but I'm just, I'm just adding some basic things to give you an idea. So this is the one that we've created together. You can do as much as you want or as little as you want. The last step I would do is actually to take um, my hole puncher and again, you don't have to do this in white paper, but I'm just hole punching in white. This would be really pretty if you were able to hole punch like a shimmery color. I'm gonna dump it right here. This is a little bit difficult. I found the easiest way to do this is just kind of just, just dab a little bit of the glue stick on here because it dries clear. Instead of trying to put glue on these and then pick them up with your finger and move them on there. So if you want to add Santa Claus or Rudolph in there, maybe a major scene, whatever you want to do. So it looks very complicated, but if you, <clears throat> if you take this step by step, um, there's lots of different options you can choose uh, for paper or fabric, or whatever you want to do, um, and then different scenes that you choose to do. Um, different designs that you want to do in different colors, but um, I think this is a really fun, gets us in the, the mood for some maybe a little bit colder weather, and I know not everybody loves snow, but I'm crossing my fingers for snow for Christmas. Um, so I hope that you stay healthy and safe this holiday season, um, and that you have a wonderful Christmas, and I will see you in January. We have something really fun to do, so. Thanks for joining me this week, and I will talk to you next time.